I killed friends, even family members, because they disrespected my boss. One of them has killed three people, and the other one killed one. Both of them have been in shootouts. Did you know that according to recent studies, organized crime activities, including those carried out by cartels, are estimated to generate an astonishing $1.00? and five cents to two trillion dollars annually worldwide. This mind-boggling figure highlights the immense power and influence wielded by these criminal networks. Among their ranks, a select few individuals rise to become the cold-blooded executioners known as Hitman. Hello everyone, how are you all? Today we bring you a chilling compilation of confessions from five of the most notorious Hitmen who have now left this world. These individuals possess a unique set of skills, a chilling willingness to kill, and often live a life that hangs in the balance between wealth, secrecy, and constant danger. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Martin Corona Martin Corona, a former hitman for the Tijuana Cartel, defied all odds in 1993 by making an attempt to assassinate notorious drug lord Duakmin El Chapo Guzman. Corona's life is characterized by loss and a need for community. He was reared in a violent household and turned to join the local gangs for solace, after discovering that his biological father was not who he had believed him to be. Corona progressed quickly inside the Tijuana cartel, propelled by his quest for acceptance and power, and finally took control of a potent assassination squad. They carried out merciless missions from their luxurious hideaway in Mexico, even sneaking into the United States. The botched attempt on El Chapo's life, however, was what caused Corona's career to change. Tragically, instead of hitting El Chapo, his bullet grazed Cardinal Juan Jesus Posadas Ocampo. The results were disastrous, causing misery and anarchy across Mexico. This episode finally resulted in Corona's demise. When he was charged with illegally possessing guns, he understood the authorities had been looking into him for a while. Corona made the decision to alter his life, as the burden of his prior deeds weighed heavily on him. He bravely decided to assist the police, providing important cartel-related information in the process. He enrolled in the Witness Protection Program in 2000 and won in search of atonement and a fresh start. He was freed from jail in 2014 after finishing his sentence, but he still goes by an alias. Corona does not give in to fear, despite the risks he may yet face. His resolve to be a coward is what he credits for his previous triumphs. But although he understands that it is impossible to really atone for the lives he destroyed, regret his actions weighs hard on his conscience. Jesus Ernesto Chavez Castillo Former Las Zetas cartel and Barrio Azteca gang member Jesus Ernesto Chavez Castillo serves as a horrifying illustration of a ruthless hitman. He helped make Hastenta Juarez the murder capital of the world, with a death toll that exceeded 800, if not 1,000. Castillo's main objective was to create dread by ruthlessly murdering a predetermined number of victims every day, differentiating himself from other hitmen who just carried out instructions. He beheaded and dismembered his victims because he thought that such extreme savagery would get attention and inspire fear. In an unexpected turn of events, Castillo decided to assist the authorities by providing evidence against his old boss, Arturo Gallegos Castrian, who oversaw the barrio. Azteca gang and was accountable for multiple murders in Juarez. Castillo wanted to reveal the gang's inner workings and atone for the lives he had taken. He disclosed that ex-military personnel connected to Las Zetas provided members of Barrio Azteca with comprehensive training that allowed them to carry out homicides effectively, including the targeting of victims inside moving cars. Castillo's testimony illuminated a noteworthy episode concerning the killing of U.S. Embassy staff. Even if it is still impossible to evaluate the truth of these claims, Castillo's role as a killing machine carrying out Castrian's commands is still obvious, exposing his merciless pursuit of dominance and control. El Sangres A rare interview with El Sangres, a former top enforcer for the Las Zetas cartel, in 2016 helped to shed light on the sophisticated network of cartel activities in Mexico. He stressed the significance of keeping the location and the physical characteristics of the interview secret while maintaining his anonymity. Particularly in the Veracruz region, El Sangres maintained a key position inside the Las Zetas cartel. Javier Dort, the governor of Veracruz at the time, was allegedly a puppet of the Jalisco New Generation cartel, CGNG, according to El Sangres. He asserted that the Las Zetas cartel's control and influence in the region were reduced as a result of a covered agreement between the government and CJNG. El Sangres praised the Zetas' tenacity while highlighting Governor Dort's efforts to eradicate them. Three or four additional hitmen 
would appear to retaliate against any opposition for every dead hitman. Unexpectedly, El Sangres emphasized the closeness of his assassins by calling them his little angels and referred to them as his little angels. He defended their murders by arguing that the victims had either harmed the cartel, owed them money, or meddled with their business. While Governor Duarte was the main target of El Sangres in his interview, his ties to the Las Zetas cartel should not be disregarded. The cartel became well known for its ruthless public demonstrations of violence and horrific acts of violence, including decapitations and dismemberments. El Sangres, on the other hand, shifted the responsibility on the government and their claimed backing of CJNG and Veracruz. Giovanni Bruscia Giovanni Bruscia, also known as the Pig and Puscana Christiani, also known as the People's Slayer, admitted to the murders of over 150 people, including renowned mafia prosecutor Giovanni Falcone. Falcone had devoted his life to stopping cartel and gang violence in Italy, which resulted in the capture of important cartel leaders and a large number of gang members. When Brescia was a teenager, he committed two murders, exhibiting a sick mind and a rebellious attitude toward the law. After Falcon was killed, Brescia was once more involved in the murder of Paolo Borsellino, another judge devoted to taking on the Sicilian Mafia. Santino de Matteo, a member of Brescia's team, was detained and turned informant as the government ramped up its campaign against the Mafia. Authorities in exchange for a reduced prison sentence, Brescia, displeased with his betrayal, kidnapped de Matteo's son, Giuseppe subjecting him to severe torture and eventually murdering him. On May 20, 1996, Russia was finally apprehended after more than 20 years in the Mafia. When Di Matteo confronted Russia in court, security personnel broke up the fight. While promising his cooperation with the court, the bereaved father expressed his desire for justice, while declining to make any promises to the animal Russia. Ironically, Russia also turned into a police informant. Maurizio Avola Former Cosa Nostra hitman Maurizio Avola revealed his terrifying tale in an interview after being apprehended. Avola, who was raised in a family-run Catania restaurant, rapidly came to the conclusion that a career in the food industry wasn't for him. He had started a path of crime and violence because he was driven by fantasies of wealth and power. When Avola was 21 years old, a mafia boss named Marcelo Diagata noticed his talent for carrying out armed robberies and recognized his potential in him. Avola subsequently became an official gang member after De Agate gave him particular assignments. However, he had to commit a murder in order to be initiated into the Mafia. Avola had intended to kill Finocchiero in front of his house, but he abandoned the task when he saw the attorney with his kids. Later that day, after regrouping, he ambushed Finocchiero at his legal office. Despite Finocchiero pleading for his life, Avola hesitated before firing the gun three times, killing the attorney. With this murder, Avola officially joined the Mafia and descended into a world of drug dealing and other murders. According to Avola, the assassination team had received specialized training in the creation and use of explosives from an American expert. This expert, who had ties to New York gangster John Gotti, specifically trained the hitman for the task of killing Falcone in May 1992. Many choose not to speak, preferring to spend their entire lives behind bars or die. But shocking information that would have otherwise remained hidden has been made public thanks to the testimony of some of the deadliest cartel hitmen. We appreciate you watching this video. If you like the video and think it will be useful to many people, click the like button to let YouTube know. Additionally, see more related content by subscribing to the channel.